Ferret World peeps, my name is Steph from Ferret World and today I wanted to give you an update on Binksy Poo. My little gorgeous girl. Binksy is my girl. She was a Christmas present to me um, seven years ago and um, she, we have a very special bond, a very very special girly bond I think it is. Um, and just wanted to kind of let you know what is going on with Binksy. So Binksy actually, um, she, what I noticed a few weeks ago was that she had some lumps just around here. So there's one bigger lump here and just on the other side there's a small lump but that was bigger and it's actually gone down a bit. Um, but this one is a bit of a bigger lump here as well. So. I noticed that a few weeks ago and we took her along with others to the vet just for a bit of a checkup um, and when he touched it, um, it, he said that it's the lymphatic glands, so just here and then he checked the other glands which I believe might be behind the shoulders. Just trying to feel them. I think there are some behind the shoulders here. Yeah, so there's behind their arms, just behind the arms, just just around that area behind the arms. If you um, put your fingers in there, if you kind of just run over that area, if there are kind of lumps on that side, then that could be their lymph uh, nodes. And sorry, I meant lymph, lymph nodes. They're the lymph nodes, not lymph glands. Um, so just there and then there are some on the neck just under their chin just under their chin at the very back there so just right there so those are swollen as well so if you go and feel any lumps underneath your ferret's chin then that might be the lymph nodes um hopefully they're not swollen like binksies are because the diagnosis that dr Vella came back with was that it's most probably some form of lymphoma um and the only two options of treating it is either with prednisone which is what sammy is on for his insulinoma or um chemotherapy which we were absolutely not not going to do um so um so yeah little miss binksy has some form of lymphoma apparently which is not very good um a few signs that i've noticed in her recently is that she sleeps a lot more um she even started sleeping in my lap which was a little bit unusual although it was also awesome because i have been waiting for that all of her life and all of my life um, and so we've, we've had a few special bonding moments recently where she's fallen asleep and come up to me and jumped into my lap and fallen asleep, which was awesome. Um, but apart from that, she is perfectly healthy. Apart from the swollen glands, she's perfectly healthy. There hasn't been anything wrong with her apart from those. Um, so it was a little bit of a shock to actually get the diagnosis that it's most probably lymphoma. We, I was not expecting that. I didn't really know what to expect. I wasn't sure what it was. Um, but, you know, she is seven years old now. So she... So it, she's, a, 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 she's classified as a senior ferret, about five years old onwards is where all these nasties start to come up uh, with ferrets. There can be ferrets that are younger that suffer from lymphoma and insulinoma and adrenal disease and all of that kind of stuff. It's kind of like the luck of the draw what your ferret has if your ferret has any diseases but they do tend to be prone to diseases and illnesses as well which I thought was awful previously but then I spoke to Dr. Vella and he said look all animals um, even humans are prone to certain diseases and we are living longer and so are ferrets in captivity as well so their bodies are getting to the stage they're living to the stage where certain d diseases are more prevalent so that made me kind of feel a bit better um, and um, 
because I did make I did feel guilty I thought that something was wrong that I was doing something wrong but it's kind of the luck of the draw and as long as you're doing the best that you can be doing then there isn't really much else that you can do genetics um, inbreeding all that kind of stuff contributes to these things and it's just part of owning a ferret is that um, they may get sick um, which is quite unfortunate it's not really something that anyone likes uh, to experience but it's just how it is so if you are or are like how I was and beating yourself up about your ferrets getting sick even though you feel like you're doing everything right feeding them raw foods and covering their cages and you know doing all of the things that we do in order to make sure that they don't get sick to help hopefully prevent their illnesses if you're doing everything right then there's nothing else that you can do um, you, you just need to do your best and um, just accept the fact that sometimes shit happens and sometimes ferrets get sick um, and they are prone to certain diseases and there's nothing much that you can do about it apart from look after them love them take them to the vet when they need it and spend a fortune on vet bills which is what we love to do don't we <laughs> but it's just something that we do as responsible ferret owners so I uh, thought I might share that little piece of wisdom with you um, because it was kind of like a bit of a transition that I went through uh, recently after finding out about Binksy so thought I might share that with you and hopefully it helps you uh, feel more comfortable with the fact that you are a good ferret owner and you're doing the best that you can um, and sometimes you just can't help when one of them gets sick or something like that so anyway Binksy as you can see is quite active uh, is very healthy and just sleeps a bit more these days but that's about it so before she runs away and jumps off my back oh no she's coming back oh no she's gonna run away uh, <laughs> i am going to love you and leave you and i shall chat to you soon tuk, tuk. Tuk, tuk, tuk. i love you Binsy. oh oh thank you for yawning in my face